Northumberland is, you know, very much part of me. Um, but if I will move further afield, it's nice to go down the coast, and it's so easy to go down the coast. Driving up. Can you give a bit of a brief overview of your project? Yeah, so um, it's called Soundweave, um, The Living North, and the title hopefully kind of describes a bit about um, what the project is. So it's kind of um, based on the format of a radio ballad, um, which is like a radio documentary which uses um, interviews and original music kind of written from the interviews and some field recordings. It's kind of all, yeah, woven together. Um, so there's not a narrator, um, which is kind of a big difference from a normal documentary. Um, and yeah, I guess it kind of draws the listener in to li listen in a bit of a different way. Um, and where did you first kind of hear a radio ballad? Like, where did that idea come from? When I first moved to Newcastle, um, I first heard, like, someone introduced me to it. It just stuck with me as a way of um, telling a story, kind of like um, the everyday life and sharing that and kind of learning from people's, people's experiences. Just kind of, yeah, stuck with me as a, as a format that I'd like to put my music into. So tell me a bit more about the conversations that you've had. Um, where are the places that you've been to kind of chat to people? What, what was like the process for you of kind of getting to that? Yeah, that was, that was actually a huge part of the project. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the first chunk of the project was finding people that would be interested and want to share um, and have a conversation. So I talked to like uh, youth groups. Um, I went to Gateshead Library and had like a table there and um, chatted to a few people there. Um, and then, yeah, like a few people that just got in touch. How did you manage to kind of pull out those samples and pieces of um, conversation, I guess, that helped really shape your, your radio ballad? How was that? Yeah, so that was the next massive chunk <laughs> of the project was the editing part. Certain phrases um, would s sort of jump out. Um, the way people spoke and, I don't know, the kind of musicalness of the way people were speaking was kind of already there. So it was just bringing those bits out. Driving up to, you know, Amble Way, up to Annick and Craster and all of those places and those beaches, they're just so beautiful and so empty. I think there's just something very calming about water, isn't there? And it sort of grounds you away from the, you know, busyness of life. I think the thing with the radio ballad format as well is kind of, it's kind of like a collage, so it's a bit more abstract than having big chunks of audio of conversation. But people, people are just really interesting and ha like speak in a really beautiful way. So it wasn't, that was a really enjoyable part of the process. And so you gathered all that together. How then did you sort of turn that and weave, I guess, that into the music to create this kind of full piece? I feel like I know these people so well because I've <laughs> listened to the audio so much. So it's kind of getting familiar with that and finding themes um, that I could sort of pick out from all of, all of the people that I'd interviewed. And then from those themes, um, like building melodies and picking phrases that I could use to form the music part of it.
tell me quickly as well about your live setup because I know there's going to be seven of you on stage. Yeah. So just talk us through how that's working and how you're going to recreate a, almost like a live radio ballad. Yeah, so that was one thing I really wanted to um, bring out was um, multiple voices. So I've got three other singers. Um, I've got Martha Hill, Maisie, who's Miles Mollis, and Janice Burns. Fran Knowles and Will Hammond, who I normally play with, um, are all going to be on stage with me. And then there's Nick Tyler is also going to be sort of triggering the audio of the interviews from off stage. Um, so it's taken, yeah, it's, ta it's been a really good challenge to work out how to recreate it live. And then I'm going to be recording the audio from the live performance and then using that to make the kind of actual radio edit. Oh, lush, that'd be amazing. Yeah. Kind of a bit of a Northeast uh, musician star lineup there <laughs> you've got going on. Um, so I feel like it's gonna be a really nice piece to hear it live as well. And then hopefully afterwards as well, I'm guessing you want this project to kind of evolve and, and live on past, past your residency with us. Yeah, that's, it's like, it definitely feels like it's opened up some like pathways of other ways to use music and ha have a career in music that's like sort of sustainable so yeah I've kind of got really into radio documentaries <laughs> <laughs> love a radio documentary yeah. um so how has it been for you like what difference has it made being an artist in residence with us here and and how has that kind of supported you and, and your project as an independent musician I'd say the biggest barrier is finance, really. Being able to like afford to spend time um, creating. Um, so having a residency where you have paid time and you have a space that you can use um, and mentors as well and, and equipment. Um, so like I wouldn't have been able to do the project without that support, really. So it's pretty central <laughs> to being able to do the project. I take myself down to the water I take myself down to the water I find myself down by the water I take myself down by the 